Hey you guys, my name is Dara Alston and I am going to do the reading habits tag. But first I want to shout out Brave Culture, my favorite clothing line. Um, do not be surprised if you see either this shirt multiple times or a lot of Brave pieces. And this is not sponsored, I just genuinely love this clothing brand, especially during the winter. Their hoodies are like a blanket and I love it. So can we talk about my reading habits? Um, this is a tag I found from one of my favorite booktubers that I talked about in the booktuber newbie tag, Noelle Gallagher. And I thought, what a better, what, what a great way for you guys to get to know me. Um, cause clearly I could not be quiet in that reading habit, that um, newbie tag. So let's get into these questions, shall we? Numero uno. Do you have a certain place at home for reading? I do. I love to read on my bed or um, on a specific couch downstairs. Those are my two favorite spaces to read. There's this one couch that really captures a lot of light. It's by the window and it's a glorious place to read. So those are two spaces that I read the most. Number two, bookmark or random piece of paper? Both. Both. Right now, I am... Where's the book? It's somewhere around here. I'm reading this book called Reading While Black. It's um, the African American Biblical Interpretation, something or other. But, um, and I'm using an El Decor subscription piece of paper as a bookmark. However, when I was reading this, I just finished this guy, Fool's Gold by Melody Carlson. I had a magnetic bookmark. And I actually don't know why it went. <laughs> I have to look for that. So, I will say to that question, yes. Number three. Can you just stop reading or do you have to stop after a chapter or a certain amount of pages? It depends on the type of book that I'm reading. So for this book, I could just stop anywhere. This is an extremely light read. Um, this is a, an older book published in 2005. So the language is a bit dated. Um, and I, I just really didn't mind. It's only 212 pages. You can even see the font. Like, it's it's an easy read. So I didn't mind stopping whenever. However, in this new book, my nonfiction read that I just started, Reading While Black, I had to stop after a specific section because even just with the first few pages that I've read, it's incredibly, like, tense. It's a lot. And even for someone, even for me, as I'm starting to get into nonfiction more, I'm realizing I really have to slow down and take it by chunks. I can't just read through it and stop whenever like I can a fiction book. So for nonfiction, I am more, I will say for, and like to kind of generalize it, for nonfiction, I am more likely to stop after a section than I am with fiction. Whereas with fiction, I'm just, I'm liable to stop whenever. Number four, do you eat or drink while reading? Yes. Now, I don't eat a full course meal. I eat like I, I nibble, whether it's some chocolates or some popcorn. I can definitely nibble. Drinking, absolutely. Water, tea, juice, absolutely. I'm all about ambiance when reading and setting a mood. Um, because I want to like kind of jump in. What I've been doing lately is... Um, in the morning when the house is quiet, I go down and I make a cup of tea and I even read while the tea is boiling. I read in the kitchen and then once my tea is finished, I go into the living room and then continue reading. So that's been a, a great little routine. Hopefully I can keep it up. <laughs> we will see. Number five, multitasking. Music or TV while reading? Um, yes to music, no to TV. And my music has specific parameters. So I need to have instrumental music. I, it, because I am so musically inclined, I, if I, if my jam comes on, the book is going down and the hands are going up. Okay. <laughs> so I, I have to listen to instrumental music. Now with that, I, I can, I listen to either lo-fi, jazz, or classical. But TV, I, I just can't. It's, it's sensory overload at that point. 
So I can't even focus on my on my book. Number six, one book at a time or several at once. Um, I used to be one book at a time when I was a commuter and I was in corporate America. However, December 2019, going into 2020, I tore my Achilles, so I was laid up. So mind you, when the pandemic hit, I had already been in the house for the most part. So it was just like, oh, I just got to do this. Like, this is just about to be my life for real. So with me recovering, um, and then furthermore, the pandemic, it rekindled my love for physical books. And so what I began to do was read a book on Kindle and then read a physical book. Um, so I'm able to read two books at once. I even tried to push that further this year and try to read three with having two print that are one fiction, one nonfiction, and then a Kindle, but it doesn't work. The most that this person right here, Dara, can do is two, and I need to be okay with that. So the most that I can do is two. Um, right now, I am doing a, a Kindle book that's fiction and then a print nonfiction. Number seven, reading at home or everywhere. Again, when I was out here in these streets during my working life, you know, I was in corporate America. I had a Kindle. I was reading everywhere. I was reading in the coffee shops, at my desk, at a restaurant. I was everywhere. Because of COVID, I only read at home. Because now when I go out, I go out with a purpose. I'm either going to the grocery store or I'm going to meet up with someone, so there's no reason for me to read a book. Because I'm with somebody. Number eight. Do you read out loud or silently in your head? Um, I read silently in my head and respond out loud. Ted Decker is the author that provokes the most out of me, I find. With his dang plot twists and such, I... He just parades on the amusement park of my emotions and just shuts down all the rides and is like, ain't nobody leaving. Ain't nobody going home. You all gonna listen to what I gotta say. Um, and it's an emotional roller coaster. And I genuinely love it. And I also like, like, I enjoy books that bring that out of me. And I feel like I'm so far beyond the question that I'm just gonna move on. Do you read ahead or even skip pages? Number nine. Um, yes and no. So, again, for books like this, as I'm going through, I'll just, yeah, I'm going through this uh, series on my personal Instagram. I'll link my Instagram in the description where I am rereading books that I read as a teenager. And so this was a series that I read as a teenager. And because the reading, again, is so light, the language is dated, Sometimes I'll look ahead, let me see, but I don't skip pages. Um, I just can't. I definitely want to take in every aspect of the book. But I do kind of look ahead and then jump back and keep reading <laughs> for books like these. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And also, oh, I did that for Bethany Turner's Hadley Beckett's Next Dish, though, because that one just, my adrenaline was just so in the throes and I had to know what was going to happen next. It was like trigger finger. Oh my gosh. Okay. Number 10. Do you break the spine or keep it like new? Um, it doesn't really matter to me. I don't care about breaking the spine or keeping it like new. I'm just reading. And that's, yeah. Like with this one, I think this one, the spine came broken because I brought, I bought I think 80% of this series, there's 12 books in this series, I bought it used. So for the most part, the spine is already broken. This one is just covered in tape. <laughs> so, but um, yeah, so the spine is not really any of my concern. And lastly, number 11, do you write in your books? Yes, specifically nonfiction books. Um, and, and specifically nonfiction books to deal within the language arts because that is the field that I work in. I am a freelance editor. I'm also an author. And so when I'm reading books that deal in that field that deal with editing 
or proofing or writing, I definitely respond and engage the text. That's something I promise you, my freshman year of college, my freshman English professor, was it fall semester? I think it was fall semester. That was the thing that really changed my life and changed my whole way of reading. And it, that's the, and it's crazy that I still remember that to this day. Um, she, it was the way she presented it, but just talking about engaging with the text, with writing in the margins, I've that stuck with me. Um, it's just that now, as an adult, it's grown into me um, responding with nonfiction books. However, I do highlight a lot in my Kindle, on my Kindle app, um, and I highlight something if it's beautifully written, like beautifully said, um, or if it's something funny. I did that a lot in, what's that, Off Script and Over Caffeinated by Kaylee Ray and Rhonda Ray. I would highlight a lot of humorous lines that I'm like, yo, or if something that I personally, I'm like, yo. But I don't, I don't write in my fiction books. If they're, if they're print, I don't write in them. But Kindle, I highlight the mess out of them. So that is going to conclude the reading habits tag. Um, I'm going to put the questions in the description. So, and I tag you, who's ever watching to do the reading habits tag. Um, again, I'm gonna put the questions in the description so that you have them to do the tag yourself. And I hope you were able to learn a little bit more about me as a reader. Um, and I look forward to doing more of these type of reading tag videos or booktube tag videos. And also you just um, understanding more about me as a reader, as a, liter a literary person in general. Cause like I said, um, not only am I a reader, but I'm a writer. I have uh, two books published. Um, I do a podcast, The Book Sale, and then I'm also a freelance editor by trade. So I am thick in the bush of the literary world, and I appreciate it from all aspects. So, but I don't know if I even need, it doesn't even matter. I'm just grateful that you guys are watching this, and I will talk to you guys in the next video.